It's just been me and my mom all throughout my lifetime. Well, why? Because my father abandoned us and ran away with some other woman. So now, guess what? All these years later, he wants to resurface in my life when things are at its worst. And this is what I'm going to do to this jerk. Hey, everyone. I've been a long time lurker, but I need some advice on an absolutely insane situation I found myself in. Apologies in advance for the long post. Let me start from the beginning. Well, I'm a 30-year-old guy named Jake. When I was 8 years old, my world came crashing down when my dad abandoned my mom and me. He was always a degenerate gambler, especially with online poker, and it turned out he was cheating on my mom with some women he met in a chat room on one of those poker sites. One day, he just up and moved to Wyoming to be with her, while uh, leaving me and my mom to fend for ourselves. My mom worked herself to the absolute bone. Sometimes two or three jobs at a time just to keep us afloat. Uh, watching her struggle month after month made me determined to build a better life for us. I studied hard and eventually got accepted to veterinary school. My absolute dream career. The years of perseverance finally paid off. And when I graduated, I landed an internship with a top veterinary in the state. I could not wait to tell my mom the good news. But fate had other plans. Just two weeks before my graduation, my mom, she got really sick. The doctors did everything they could, but it was too late. I lost her. I was devastated beyond words. I mean, it was my rock, my hero, and she's gone. I somehow managed to finish school, but my graduation and a new job felt hollow without her there to celebrate with me. The funeral was a blur of tears and condolences from friends and family. Everybody telling me how proud she'd be. But nothing prepared me for who strolled in halfway through the service. My father. The man who abandoned us and had not bothered reaching out once in 18 years. Shock gave away to anger. And before I knew it, we were practically brawling. Screaming, throwing punches in the middle of the chapel. The cops had to drag us both outside and ban us from the premises. I couldn't believe my final goodbye to my mother was ruined by my deadbeat father's audacity to show his face. But the worst was yet to come. Turns out my parents were uh, never officially divorced, since my father just disappeared. So, legally, my mother's estate went entirely to him. Everything she worked for her whole life, gone to the man who abandoned us. To add insult to the injury, as he left the lawyer's office with his pocket full of her money, my dad mocked me and called me, quote, a mama's boy. I was full of rage and despair. This man ruined our lives, and now he just waltzes in to steal my inheritance and tarnish my mother's memory? I've never felt so powerless and alone. I didn't know where to turn or what to do. Well, that's the end of part one, guys. I could really use some advice or maybe just words of encouragement. I'll try to update you with how this mess proceeds, but honestly, I'm at a total loss right now. What's up, everybody? I could not even imagine... A father showing up after so long and then having the audacity to start a brawl. Guys, we do have multiple updates and oh man, this story is revenge haven because things are about to get real. If you have not subscribed to the channel, just take a second, hit that subscribe button for daily revenge stories and let's go ahead and jump into update number one. First of all, thank you for all the incredibly kind and thoughtful comments and messages. This community is really something special. Your reactions and support mean the world to me right now, and I wish I could respond to each of you individually, just to express my gratitude. Know that I've read every comment carefully, and I'm taking your advice to heart. Okay, so here's what happened since my last post. My best friend Mike thinks that I should fight this in court. He says, I have a good case to prove abandonment and failure to pay child support. Hearing you guys say similar, it gives me hope. Anyways, after discussing it more with Mike, I think he's right. I at least need to try to get the justice that I deserve. So, I've started gathering everything I can to show my father uh, left us high and dry. Old bills, bank statements, anything to show my mom struggled alone. You know, organizing all this paperwork and evidence has been emotional. But also clarifying, seeing tangible proof of all my mom's sacrifice, it really lights a fire under me to fight. So, 
I also got a consultation with a lawyer. His name's Robert. He specializes in family court cases like mine. He was very sympathetic to my story and did seem cautiously optimistic, but he did warn that cases like these are very hard to win. But he thinks that we do have a legitimate shot if we build the argument right. He's taking it completely on contingency, so I don't have to put money down until we hopefully get a settlement. Robert also advised me to not contact my dad directly under any circumstances, as that could obviously jeopardize the case. So as much as I want to give him a piece of my mind, I'm keeping my distance per the lawyer's instructions. In the meantime, life goes on. My internship at the animal clinic is going better than expected. Dr. Sanchez says I have a real talent with the animals. Focusing on work during the day helps distract me from grieving and all the legal drama. Interacting with all the dogs, cats, and even the occasional piglet or turtle has been very therapeutic. Animals, they don't judge. They bring me peace and comfort during this difficult time. But last week, I caught wind that my dad's back in town, and he's selling my childhood home. The house I grew up in with my mom, I mean filled with so many memories and just like that he swoops in and takes those from me too. I was furious when I drove by and saw the for sale sign right there staked in the front yard, but I managed to restrain myself per Robert's advice but still seeing my home up for grabs it cut deep. Just another reminder of what my father selfishly stole from me. I'm trying to stay disciplined and keep looking ahead to the court date rather than dwelling on my dad's latest slight, but it's hard not to feel defeated sometimes. I could really use some encouragement to stay strong and see through this. I'll keep you guys posted on how the case progresses. Please, wish me luck. Update number two. Wow. Waking up to another wave of encouragement, compassion, and great advice has me all sorts of emotion. I didn't think humans still acted like this. You guys are the best, truly. I can't properly express how much your support has, well, got my spirit straight during the roughest stretch of my life. Okay, here's the latest scoop. After that gut punch of seeing my childhood home for sale, my buddy Mike convinced me to get away for a bit, clear my head. So, we just got back from a week-long camping trip in the mountains near our hometown. You know, just being out there in nature, sitting by the fire pits at night, gazing up at the stars. It was just the reset I needed. The fresh air and distance from all the drama and negativity really helped me process everything. So, I did a lot of thinking about my mom. All the sacrifices that she's made for us and how devastated she would be to see my dad try to profit off of all her work. Mike even helped me realize I can't let my dad win so easily. As you all said, I owe it to myself and, of course, my mother's memory to fight this with everything that I've got. So, the day after I get home, I met with my lawyer, Robert, told him I'm fully committed to move ahead with the case, even knowing the odds are slim. Between my savings and selling some of my mom's old jewelry, I just barely scraped together enough for the retainer fee to officially get the wheels moving. Robert warned me, it'll likely take months before we even get a court date, but the wait will be worth it if we can win even a portion of my rightful inheritance back. I know my mom would want me to fight for justice, so that's what I'm going to do. The night I got home from signing all the paperwork with Robert, I get this unexpected call. Dr. Sanchez from the animal clinic? He said he's done some digging. Heard about my situation with my father. Turns out he went through something eerily similar as a kid when his own deadbeat dad abandoned his family. So he apologizes sincerely for jumping the gun on my suspension after the grocery store incident. So not only did he offer me my job back immediately, but he insisted on covering my legal fees so I could pursue this case without any lingering financial burden. I was floored by his generosity. After months of misfortune, maybe the universe is finally cutting me down some slack. So uh, now begins the waiting game until our court date, which Robert estimates will happen sometime in the next five to six months. I'm feeling equal parts nervous and hopeful. 
Something tells me that you folks cheering me on in this new support system around me, maybe I have a real shot at justice. I'll be sure to update once our court date is official and just keep you posted of any big developments. In the meantime, well, wish me luck and send some positive thoughts my way if you can. Edit to add. This was edited by the OP to add this to the end of update number two. Hey guys, I forgot to mention in the last post, and yes, I've read all your comments wondering why I got suspended from the animal clinic in the first place. Well, apparently my little fist fight with my dad, it ended up kind of going viral in our little town because somebody recorded it. And it ended up on the newspaper also, so my boss heard about it and just straight up suspended me without looking into it. Anyways, that's how I got suspended, and well, I'm back now. Anyways, I will update you guys in a bit. Update number three, final update. This has come to an end. I honestly could not have gotten through it without the amazing community here giving me support and comments. I mean, you all kept me going through it through the darkest times. Alright, the court case was a grueling few days of tense testimony. Painful, cross-examination, I really did hire the best lawyer I could. Well, we relived all the traumas of my mom's death and my dad abandoning us. It took a massive emotional toll. There were certainly moments I wanted to give up. Well, in the end, the verdict was bittersweet. The judge, well, saw fit that I was awarded 50% of my mother's estate... As I mentioned initially, and not as much as I believe I deserve, but still far better than letting my uh, father keep everything. I wish I could have reclaimed it all, but I'm trying to find peace with the outcome. There is a silver lining, though. The judge also ordered my father to serve jail time. Two years for fraud. Yeah, it was related to some shady financial documents the lawyer uncovered. I don't rejoice in anybody's imprisonment, but I do hope this brings some closure. I guess he can't hurt my mom's memory any longer in a jail cell. Well, the money awarded, it'll help me get back on my feet financially as I step into this new chapter filled with possibility. I do so with renewed perspective. Material possessions will never replace the family I've lost. I know my mom would be proud of the choices I've made to fight. Regardless of the outcome, her spirit lives on in me. These lessons you all helped me learn are resilience and standing up for what's right. As for my father, I will not be visiting him in prison or anytime soon I won't be riding him or nothing. He deserves to be there and I'm only upset that he got 50% of the inheritance. However, last I heard he's already gambled it all away. Top comments from the post. Comment number one from Don't Settle for Less says... I think you should have fought harder for the full inheritance, OP. I mean, I get that the court case was grueling, like you say, but 50% seems too generous. I mean, we're talking about a deadbeat father here. He didn't deserve a single penny after walking out and never looking back. You should have uh, appealed the ruling. Comment number two, replying to comment one from Sibo Side, says, I disagree with you. The court case already took a huge emotional toll on OP. Dragging it out further would just prolong the pain. Getting 50% of the inheritance back was still a win-win. You know, all things considered. Just be proud of what you accomplished. Don't settle for less. Comments back and says, well, no, that's not really true. You're entitled to your opinion, though, but I stand by what I say. We're talking about his mom's life work here. I just, well, giving up half to an absentee father out of exhaustion, it seems wrong. Fight for what's truly yours. Don't just settle because it's hard. Final comment from Sibo Sides replies, Look, I get where you're coming from. You know, it's a place of wanting justice. But there's a point where you have to weigh the mental strain against the reward. OP knows his situation best, I'd say. I say be proud of getting back what you could. Just move on. And then OP chimes in, seeing all these comments, wants to add a comment for himself. OP states this. Guys, I appreciate both of your perspectives here. This whole ordeal has been draining both financially and emotionally. I'm trying not to second guess the court decision, and at the end of the day, getting back any of my mom's thing, it feels like a win. 
I know she just want me to be happy again someday. That's what I'm working towards now. Thank you guys for all your support and advice. All right, guys, first of all, let's just say I'm so happy that the father, he went to jail. He deserved it. He was a horrible human. And yes, a lot of people were upset that he got 50% of the inheritance. The truth is, guys, he's already gambled half of it away, if not all of it. And by the time he gets out of jail, it's not going to do much for him. Anyways, I do still think it's ridiculous he got anything because I don't know what the judge was thinking. Anybody can see clearly that OP was deeply, deeply, deeply upset by the father showing up. He hasn't been anywhere in all these years. Guys, I do want to know your thoughts, and we can also take a second to talk about the comments that we just read. The first commenter was saying, no, this is ridiculous. You should have gone ahead to fight for the full inheritance. It's your mom's life work. It's everything that she worked up for. And for you to just let it go with only 50% is not doing enough. But then the next comment's like, hey, we get your point. But at the same time, is it really worth fighting in court for the next six months or a year and spending all these court fees when reality is you might not even win the rest of the 50%? Do you just cut your losses knowing your father is in prison and just walk away? Let me know what you guys would do in the comment section down below. Guys, my name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories like this every day, and this is my revenge channel, where every single story has something to do with karma or revenge. So if you guys want to be a part of these daily stories, consider subscribing. It does help the channel if you hit that subscribe button, guys. Only about 35% of the viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. So guys, do me a favor. Hit that button. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. And just of course remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.